I want to start by reflecting on some comments, a message sent out to the Lionesses from Her Majesty the Queen last night, talking about uh, their success with her warmest congratulations. But it was the line, you have all set an example that will be an inspiration for girls and women today and for future generations. And she's spot on with that, isn't she? Oh, absolutely. I mean, now that the youngsters, not only those in the stadium, but then many, many millions watching on television, girls can now see a pathway to earning a living, providing, of course, they've got the talent. So, yes, it, it's an enormously important moment. Patricia, what did you make of the game? I mean, not just the result, but the, the commitment and the way they were pushing forward, the tackles that were going in, the body checks. I mean, a lot of people may have been quite surprised that this goes on in the women's game. Well, they were. Uh, yes, it was. It was a close game, but it was always going to be a close game. You can never, ever underestimate the Germans because they are a very strong, disciplined team. And we, shall we say, beat them at their own game last night. Um, there were some very, um, shall we say, worrying moments in the second half. But uh, we went to extra time and my fear was, and happily we didn't, end up at penalties, but that was definitely a fear. Patricia, it's uh, Aidan here. You spoke to me yesterday and said you'd feel immense pride when the players walked out onto that turf at Wembley. How did you feel then when the final whistle went and the team went and subsequently lifted that trophy? Well, that was, that was when the emotion came in because never, ever would we have expected that we could do this. Um, 1984, we were, England was in the first final we lost to Sweden on penalties, and I really didn't want to see that happen again this time. Look, it's important, I think, to, to reflect on people like you and your legacy in the game, because, of course, you know, the girls in this team last night, they'll always be remembered. Their names will go down in history, uh, especially the goal scorer, Chloe Kelly, uh, the, the winning goal scorer. Um, but, you know, you were instrumental in, in changing attitudes. Not only did you help to set up the Women's FA in 1969, you forced the FA to overturn the ban on women playing. And it's people like you that people should be thanking this morning, partly, for the success of the Lionesses? Well, unsurprisingly, I had a lot of messages last night saying exactly that, because people do appreciate that not just me, but loads of people, men and women, who ran teams and uh, set up leagues and set up the association. And, yes, we worked very, very hard to get it established. And then we handed it over to the FA in ninety three. And they were able to, shall we say, run with it and invest the money that we didn't have um, to make the grain grow. And that is a really nice moment that now that has happened. And this is, this is just lovely because I always had a feeling that the women would get there first, that we would be, um, we would be ahead of the men in bringing a trophy back to England. And, and in some style, it has to be as, uh, said as well. Patricia, thank you very much yeah, indeed for your you. time and uh, all the hard work you've done yes. over the years since 1969. Thanks for joining us here on GB yeah. News. Thank you. Uh, let's bring in a GB News viewer uh, and listener. They want to get involved in the discussion as well. This morning, Alistair John joins us from Burton-on-Trent. A very good morning to you. And I know that you want to pay tribute to the likes of Patricia Gregory as well. Good morning, Isabel and Mark. Yes, most certainly. And we need to learn from history and not make the mistake from the team that won in 1966. New Year's Honours list. The team should be looking to be on there to play the way they did as a cohesive unit, unbeaten throughout the tournament, with a prolific goal-scoring uh, tally. Magnificent. And indeed, uh, Her Majesty, perhaps sharing those sentiments this morning, uh, the Queen's message, uh, championship and your performance in them have rightly won praise. However, your success goes far beyond the trophy you have so deservedly earned. An indication, perhaps, that, yes, honours may well be on the way. And off that list, you shouldn't miss Patricia Gregory, because she started it all. She had the foresight to believe... So all those people behind the scenes as well, you think? Yes. Without the behind-the-scenes grassroots uh, momentum, the team can't play. You see the cohesive unit on the pitch, 
but there's all the bits and pieces that go together to keep that team as an homogenous unit. But the difference is, compared to the male game, they're hungry, they play as a team, they're proud to play for their country. Unfortunately, the guys have lost the weight. They've got millions in the bank, and, oh, yeah, I'm playing for England. Oh, well, if we don't win, it doesn't really matter. Yes, it does blooming matter. It has a psychological effect on the country. Um, since, you, since you mentioned Patricia Gregory there, I'll bring her back in and just reflect on, on that point you were making there, Alistair John, and that was, of course, the weight of the burden that we see so often in the male teams. And I wonder, Patricia, whether, you not, whether or not you think that is the, the key difference between the games. Or do you think that there was a, I don't know, a different sort of uh, approach to the game in general? Well, I think you, you've got to give enormous credit to Serena for the way she has developed the team and instilled in them a confidence that perhaps wasn't there before. And that's, that's so important, as we have seen, because we have seen the result. So we have to give credit to her and her backroom staff, as we were talking about backroom people, because there is always, when you have a victory like this, there is always a big team behind the victors.